Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, let's sort of bring it on home now. That sort of sort of it takes take uh, some of these ideas and just have a little bit of uh, some some perspective here. So first, um, before before I start talking about uh, just sort of summarizing some conservation successes and management successes and stuff, uh, I want to hear from you guys. So go to my go to this poll pollev.com slash Sean Anderson three eighty. I think you can boom this with your phone, but you know, I'll just go polyv.com slash Sean Anderson 380. And uh, uh, when you first do it, it just look blank, but I want you guys to, you can take, a, let's take like two minutes or so. Uh, think of for yourselves, some cool successes, some things that seem to be working well, either that you read about or whatever, or maybe something we saw in a scoop it post or, or something we saw on a trip, any, any aspect um, of coastal marine management that, um, seems to be a bright spot or, or going well or going in the right direction. And so you guys throw in and then type in your, those three, like type in an answer, then it, it'll say, do you want to do another one? You can get another one. So do up to three. And then once people start putting them in, you guys should be able to upvote ones you like or not. Uh, but, but until people start typing in, that, that option will be available. So we'll just take two, uh, two minutes and you guys can type in a few answers and we'll see what you guys think. Okay, maybe another 30 seconds. Is the upvoting working for you guys yet? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, cool. So um, we'll look at that in a second, but, um, but let me just uh, keep going here for right now. So I would say a few examples of, of coastal and, and, and marine management successes um, are uh, coastal water quality. So we didn't talk a huge amount about this. Uh, we talked about it in the context of oil spills. We didn't talk about some of the other things we, we maybe would have talked about if we didn't get, or if I didn't get distracted by the oil spill for a few weeks. Um, but uh, for example, um, Santa Monica, Venice Beach, people used to get all kinds of cholera and, and horrible, horrible stuff just by going to the ocean um, in the 1910s, 1920s, 1930s. Um, because of just the horrible sanitation and, uh, and just raw sewage pouring into the bay, et cetera. That's gotten dramatically better 
right? We still have problems with, with nutrient runoff. We still have problems with, with coastal contaminants and metals and things of that nature. But we've made tremendous progress in terms of those, um, the early days of, for example, Southern California coastal water quality. Another great example of a success is dealing with the ozone hole. So when I was, when I was your guys, in your guys' stages, I, I was working on a project on, um, on dealing with um, uh, ozone depletion and how we get action and how we engage with local businesses and all this kind of stuff. Long story short, the Montreal Protocol happened and we still have an ozone hole over Antarctica. It's still problematic. Um, just like climate changes, there's a lot of inertia built into the system, but we took a uh, concerted, multilateral, voluntary uh, uh, agreements with folks across the planet. And we've, we've um, been phasing out chlorofluorocarbons and other ozone destroying chemicals. Huge success, huge success. This was going to have massive, uh, uh, it is having massive, but it would have even greater impacts to coastal water productivity in places like Antarctica, Australia, South America, et cetera. And so this was a, a, a huge success. Combating invasive species. We still have a ton of invasive species around. Um, and we have, you know, Arundo, we have, we have no, no shortage of invasive species. But compared to where we were um, several decades ago, we've gotten much better. Pompous grass that we talked about during our trip up the central coast, that was initially planted in Santa Barbara, actively planted in, in agricultural settings, row crop settings to produce plumes for, for fancy hats and this and that. And then, you know, surprise, surprise, it got out and started causing problems. Um, we would not allow that type of production to go in today. And so we, we've, made, we've made improvements. Um, California Coastal Act probably speaks for itself, but the notion of, of access to the coast, of, of protections for our coast, obviously there are some controversies here that's caused some problems, but overall, the reason we can still get to at least some of the beaches in Malibu, right, is because of these types of protections. Um, and the reason when we took our Central Coast trip and we didn't see a huge wall of houses all the way up from, Morro Bay up to, to Big Sur coastline, again, was because of the Coastal Act. There, were all kind, there have been all kinds of proposals to develop different chunks of the coast, and the Coastal Act has been a tool to ask whether all of those developments needed to go forward or not. Um, and then I would say, uh, which we'll talk about in, in a few minutes here, a couple more examples of fisheries successes. We just heard about um, uh, lobster in the Santa Barbara Channel, and we've been reading about other examples, uh, but I'll show you a few more. Um, as far as a review, what we've been talking about this semester, the coast is really real. The coast is a real thing. So here's just a, a random image from uh, a few months ago, but, but this is uh, COVID cases and the middle of the country is one color. The coastal regions are a lighter color, right? It's not perfect match, but, but the, the coast manifests itself in many different ways. Um, in our society and in our world. Um, uh, uh, people doing, uh, you know, going out and recreating and doing all that kind of stuff is, is a key uh, aspect. I'd say that's a success. Um, we could talk about uh, uh, the most recent uh, big election we had last fall, and this was the, vo the voting pattern, right? And so it doesn't matter what 15 and 16 were for our conversation here, it's just there were, there were some things to vote on. And the point is clear differences in terms of the average coastal vote versus the average inland vote. Again, the coast is real. I would say, generally, we know what to do. Not every single case, but generally, with all of these coastal management situations, we, we understand, in, in, at least in general terms, what we should be doing. And so don't get so freaked out that we don't know what to do. So there's Sonoma County, there's PCH crumbling in the ground, right? We saw how we, we redid PCH in, in the San Luis Obispo County area. Um, here's Surfers Point, same thing was happening here. We're, we're, we're losing Surfers Point, erosion, coastal erosion, bluff erosion, oh my God, bike trail sucks, super dangerous for kids to go to the beach, all that stuff. Um, and it's, it's been restored. And, and some of you guys are doing your capstone projects on this even. And, and this is now a classic example of how to do um, professionally, responsibly, 
um, uh, managed retreat, how we can deal with sea level rise in an adult way and not scream and scream bloody murder and say the world's ending and oh my God, we can't do anything and we have to pour concrete everywhere. This was the opposite of that, right? This was the allowing the erosion to happen, recover habitat, have recreation, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, our coast has improved. We just touched on the notion of nutrients and, and water quality, but you know, this is the coast of LA, right? From 100 years ago. Um, uh, I would posit that that wasn't the best possible use of that part of our world uh, in the Sea of Derricks. Um, also, right? Uh, we we really love our coasts, right? And so, so um, we've been at a time when people didn't uh, right didn't have many rules or protections or whatever, and we've gotten much better. In this case, what we're looking at is people in the water. Most people couldn't swim here, and so you see these lines going into the water. It's because people couldn't swim, so when they would get stuck, they would grab the ropes and try to pull themselves onto land. Um, coastal access. This is. A sign out, what's that restaurant called? Uh, Jeffries. This is Jeffries in Malibu. Um, and uh, I think I told you guys this story, but just real briefly, uh, 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 the short version is folks that work at the restaurant um, put, a, put a walkway down so they could deliver takeout to the beachfront homes down below the restaurant, right? So this is right, this, this area is right on PCH and then there's a, there's a, a frontage, or a, not a frontage road, but another road below PCH right there. And there's houses all around it. So they sort of set this thing up and, and long story short, they were basically told they had to open it up for public access. And the restaurant was like, this is a joke. This is like messed up, right? Um, I, I would argue that that's, you know, not messed up, right? Um, so it's, it's public access in a place where people couldn't otherwise access the beach or easily access the beach. And, uh, and it's, it's not reduced the profits of the restaurant. It's not inhibited their ability to, to make money or whatever, but it's just simply been more access. Um, in terms of fisheries, we've talked about fisheries, right? And the big story is that, that with many of our fish stocks, they were super abundant. They were either big individuals or, or quite numerous. And then over time, we, we over harvested and, and had some negative impacts on those guys and the numbers have gone down. And so again, we, we can scream that the world is over and oh my God, we can bear our head in the sand and everything sucks and then everything's gonna be Blade Runner and we're all gonna be eating bugs and stuff. Um, but we have tools, we have other things to do. And so here's some examples of some of the success. We, again, we just heard about the lobster story. There's another story. So this is uh, white sea bass. This is a, a very popular fish, really tasty fish and really desirous fish. Um, you can get it in restaurants. You can also get it recreationally. And uh, this is the uh, white sea bass catch. And so, you know, we're catching a lot of these fish, a lot of these fish, and then World War, end of World War II, we start, you know, attacking them like crazy and we go boom. And then they've been sort of on a downhill spike uh, ever since, or, or not ever since, but, but, but in the wake of that decision. Um, but if we look more closely, in the mid 90s, they start to get more abundant, this big marine fish. And that corresponded to a proposition to get rid of gill nets in, in much of our near shore waters. So, again, as if you recall, gill nets are those indiscriminate fishing, mono, usually monofilament nets where the fish pokes its head through, gets stuck. And they try to back out, but the the gill, their percula, their their gill covers get stuck, and then they're they're stuck, right? And so, um, if it was this fish we're trying to get, okay, great, it's size selective, but once you put the the net out, it is a very indiscriminate killer. It's any fish that's in that size will get killed, not just our target species. And so it turns out that was having a huge effect. So so we banned gill nets, and shocker, shocker. This, after a few years, the species um, starts to become more locally abundant. Um, and so we see the same thing uh, in a bunch of different ways. And yep, and so if we look at, if we control for effort, again, the catch per unit effort here, what we see is starting in that mid nineties, the catch per unit effort is going up. So for the same amount of effort, the same amount of line, the same number of hours, we're getting more 
biomass of fish, which is good. That's suggesting the population is growing, is recovering, is, is going in the right direction. Um, and uh, yeah, and so we see the same thing with juveniles and, and all that good stuff. Here is the world record. Uh, this might, there might be another world record I, uh, since then. I, I don't remember, but at least um, uh, as of a couple of years ago, this was still the world record. And so this is a huge fish. This guy um, it was a spear fisherman that, that took him uh, off Malibu. And this, again, is another, it's anecdotal, but it's, it's consistent with a relatively well-managed fishery. If we're not getting just little teeny tiny fish all the time, if we're, we're sometimes able to get these big honking fish, that's telling us that these big honking fish are out there. So that's a, that's a positive sign, I would suggest. Okay, so that was white sea bass. We could also look at um, uh, giant sea bass. And um, these are cool fish. Juveniles, very distinct. These little little uh, uh, sort of pokey dotty little uh, grouper looking things um, that come in on the sand when they recruit in. Um, I told you a story that the only time I saw, I ran into one when I was diving a, a big, uh, uh, well, a juvenile, but nevertheless, it seemed like the biggest fish in the world. And I almost messed myself underwater when I was diving. Um, huge fish. These are again, the apex predator. These are the fish that in our local kelp forests would eat anything it could get in its mouth. And so they weren't afraid of anything. They would eat everything. And uh, we, we strongly impacted them with uh, overfishing. There's, there's a bit of a debate as to, as to why this happened, but it seems pretty clear to me that spear fishermen played a significant role in that, although my spear fishermen friends uh, disagree with that. Um, but they're, again, they're big fish, you know, taller than me, um, and you know, like two, you know, two, three times my weight. Um, and so again, same story, we've seen this before. Here's the historic landings, right? They're sort of low for a while, then we're like, oh, these are a tasty thing, let's get them. And we super hit them hard. And then we've been on this downhill uh, uh, slope, right? Uh, another example would be um, uh, some of our uh, local sharks that sort of behave similar and get caught similarly in these gill nets. Um, also our leopard sharks can get caught in there. And so if we look at these two different shark species, that near shore shark species, species, can't talk, right? Again, on the decline, on the decline. So there are fewer and fewer of these guys. Uh, but in the wake of the gillnet ban, just like with the white sea bass, we see giant sea bass. We see um, uh, these two species of sharks all getting uh, uh, more we get more biomass per unit effort than before. So again, all signals of a recovering population, which is awesome. Um, and in fact, we're starting now to see, we, we, after, so first we just sort of started seeing a few more, then we started seeing them around um, early 2000s, mid 2000s, actually start to show up in places we hadn't seen them in a long time. And in this particular place, this is an area where our colleagues have been consistently counting all the time. So that it's not as if they just started, start, started looking, but we've been looking for years and years and hadn't seen any. And then we started noticing these fish show up. Again, another uh, example of success. So um, I wouldn't say that these populations are all perfect and everything is just, you know, do whatever you want, right? Um, we're, we're still, uh, they're still recovering from very heavy exploitation. But white sea bass, well managed, I would argue now. Uh, black sea bass on the way to being recovered, right? We're not recovered yet, but on the way. And those are, it's all evidence that yes, marine protected areas can matter, but we can also attack a single problematic activity, in this case, gill nets, right? Um, if, if, if we recognize there's a problem, we can choose to act. We can choose to make this decision to tweak this is going on of things and get the positive response. Um, politically, sometimes these can be hard decisions and we have to have, you know, uh, uh, honest, good conversations with all our stakeholders, people that are skeptical, people that are supportive, everything. But if we really decide that this step needs to be taken, if we take those steps, we can see good responses in our coastal and marine environment. So don't get despondent and think that, oh my God, these challenges are so hard, we're never gonna solve anything. We've solved a bunch of things. 
many more things to be worked on, but we have the capacity. You guys have the capacity to, uh, to make things better. Um, and you guys are engaged. So let's see what you guys, let's see what you guys uh, thought as to your, as to your, uh, let's see, how can I make this? How can I make this bigger? Uh, hmm, how do I make this too? Let me do this. Okay, so it looks like uh, you, you guys, your, your favorite things so far that got upvoted were, was, were uh, the number one thing was removal of dams. Um, and then alternative energy, uh, alternative ener uh, oceanic sources of energy to replace fossil fuels. Um, and then uh, uh, not allowing everybody to put up a seawall. Um, investments in aquaculture. Um, uh, oh yeah, recovery of the elephant seals. I should have put that one. In. That was a great one, right? So that, so again, that was that was a, a species almost extinct, um, only alive on, as far as we can tell, on, the, on this one little island off of uh, Baja. And from that, essentially, we now think we have more than we, or, well, the same amount or more than we historically have had at the peak of the population of northern elephant seals. So they've actually reco recovered quite well. Still have a bottleneck, still have, still have a, um, you know, theoretically susceptible to uh, diseases and things of that nature with low genetic diversity, this overall population. But um, doing doing well, right? And they're doing so well that we saw them invading restorations, right? And causing wetland erosion because they're so abundant and moving into new areas. That was pretty cool. Uh, uh, snowy plovers, I, I presume that means we're, that we, we still have them around. Um, they haven't been on the ups, upswing per se, but the fact that we have them around is, is a good thing and that we have um, uh, uh, procedures to exclude people from immediately around their nests so that we don't step on the, the babies and kill them. Um, dedicated land for elephant seals. Oh, there's another elephant seal. Ooh, man, look at that. Maybe there's, if we combine the recovery of elephant seals with a dedicated, maybe that's the number one thing you guys thought. Um, another, well, okay, another vote for a wind uh, energy. Coastal access as a general win. Uh, the proposal of the Chumash. Uh, uh, National Marine Sanctuary, uh, marine protected areas in general, seasonal fishing and, and sort of seasonal restrictions on, on harvest. Uh, manage retreat, look at that, manage retreat. Ooh, lobsters in Santa Barbara. Okay, look at that. So these guys are all, a lot of these kind of over or are, are, are related to one another, uh, fish population recovery, uh, plans for oil spills, Ormond Beach public access. Um, and now we're getting into just the one or two votes, but, uh, 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 the notion of other uh, novel things to, to culture and mariculture, aquaculture setting that we saw up in uh, Monterey. Um, again, manage a treat, uh, uh, manage a treat in the context of, of PCH. Um, a better coastline. Ooh, that's an interesting Who said that one? T tell me more when you guys, what, what specifically you guys were thinking about. I know somebody, somebody voted for this. Somebody typed it in. Who's the, who's the idea person? It's all good. I'm just trying to figure out what you guys were, what you were thinking. So when you thought better, what did what did you I'll specifically? Maybe like um, vegetation barriers instead of like hard structures. Um, maybe more uh, like indigenous plants to make. I don't know. I, I it just kind of seemed like. Okay, so more more of a view shed kind of thing. Okay, okay. Uh, new technology. Who put that down? Somebody give me a couple of examples of what you mean by what specific new technology you're talking about. Oh, now nobody's fessing up. Oh, now we're all quiet. I see how it is. Somebody said new technology. <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah, Jen. I didn't write it down, but I did look it up. Okay. And so what was your what was your thought in your head? So because I like it because I feel like new advancements make progress. Um, and then I think it's like the new technology that makes things better for the people who are 
Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, coastline being public. Um, uh, more fisheries restrictions. Um, the fact that uh, ESRM, you can make money doing ESRM things. That's a good thing, right? It's good to be able to not just help the planet, but actually be able to pay rent and stuff. That's a, that's a cool thing. Um, community engagement, another vote for MPAs, um, another vote for the Chumash uh, um, Marine Protected Area, and uh, fix the Rincon pollution issues. There we go, another vote for um, uh, pollution cleanup stuff. So cool. So, 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 um, in it, so yeah, so I think, I think when I, if I go through and I rebin these, it, it looks like uh, removal of dams will be pretty high, but maybe not number one. But uh, it looks like um, uh, the energy and, and seawalls and coastal access and fisheries are all really, um, really popular. So that's cool. Um, am I done with this here? Yeah, so I guess I'm basically done with that. So I would just say, um, you know, we talked about a lot of stuff this this semester, and um, as with all of our ESRM things, we sometimes can get bummed out. We sometimes can be like, "Oh my gosh, whatever." But but ample evidence uh, that we can make our coastline more resilient, more sustainable. So awesome! Um, all right. So next, I wanted to talk about our seafood surveys. But why don't we take a quick five minute stretch um, before we get turned to talking about the seafood survey data entry stuff? So I got uh, 9.58, so we'll start in uh, five minutes. So at uh, uh, 10.03, we'll, we'll, if you guys want to stretch, um, I'll start us up. 